Yeah, Tuesday. What's up, everybody? Tuesday morning. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. I had somebody send me a message yesterday that with all these stay-at-home orders, the only way they know what day of the week it is is when I say, yeah, Tuesday, to kick off the day. So uh, yesterday we had a, a really great uh, trading day. There was a fair amount of volatility and movement in the markets, even though we had a bank holiday in, the, uh, in Europe. And so our uh, our uh, our currencies didn't flow quite as much, but we saw a lot of really great movements. Hopefully, you were able to take advantage of a lot of the levels from the daily market commentary. You will see some lines on here uh, today that were not on yesterday's DMC, and that's because on Monday night we did our live trade room. So some of these levels will come from our live trade room. If you are not a Traders Army subscriber, uh, go to tradersarmy.com today. Uh, join us. We'd love to have you as a as a member. Use the promo code Trader60 for 60% off your first month. Uh, today we have Justin Krebs teaching a uh, a longer term uh, trading strategy, and then tomorrow night we've got our open forum session, and we have some member chat rooms uh, going on today. So very very busy week at Traders Army. We'd love to have you as a member. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So the S and P we are up 30 points. Uh, a little over 1%. Uh, and last night, we looked at this area here for potential breakout uh, in the uh, in the, uh, in the the S&P, and we did get a little pop out of that, and then we come up a bit higher. Now, we didn't get... Uh, we didn't get kind of three touches and additional basing and things like that. Uh, we were just kind of looking at, at this as a as a as an area where we could see price move up from, and that's what we've what we've seen is prices moved up from there pretty well. We have a bit of a demand area down here that was formed in the overnight. My only issue with this demand area is that this demand area. Uh, was formed at a horrible time of day, right? Anything formed at 7 p.m. is typically going to be our worst time of day to look for levels. And um, while I think it's a valid level, I don't think it's the best. And so I'm going to look right here for the next breakout opportunity, which would be a basing in here. And if you notice, what we have seen really has been the opportunity to buy breakouts because our 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 demand areas just aren't being retested. So that would be the next area up here. Now we've got some supply up above us, but remember this about our supply levels. Any supply level right now has to be a confirmation entry. And one of the things that I've said over and over again is that our four hour is showing a weakening of momentum. Um, I think that there's a chance that we go back and retest those lows. I really do. However, until we put in a lower swing low and a lower swing high on the four hour, I'm going to continue to buy um, bigger. Uh, I'm going to continue to buy pullbacks and look for breakouts to the upside, because I am a bull until proven otherwise. When the trend is this strong, um, and and I'm okay being wrong on a on on trying to get long and it reversing against me. Um, you know, one of the things I see a lot of people, you know, show all these places where. You know, you got to pick the exact turning point. And in reality, if you're always looking to pick the exact turning point, you're going to miss the big move. Um, I see lots of traders who miss out on the big trend moves because they're looking for individual turning points at every single pass and not staying with the trend direction. So um, we're, we're still utilizing uh, these areas of, of supply and demand, these fair price value areas, but we are not uh, not looking to to overcomplicate the matters. Uh, and when the markets are in a bullish trend, stay bullish until we get a lower swing low and a lower swing high. Now, in a four hour, that wouldn't happen until I get below this 2701 at this point. Now, remember, that number also continues to rise because last week it was this 2625 area. So that's why some of these areas do still exist for areas of shorts. Uh, in the NASDAQ, so we looked at the NASDAQ levels. We had this 8500 level in the NASDAQ. Uh, which, if I uh, if I go off and look at that one a little bit more, uh, we can see that that is a supply level from back in this area. Now this is a gap fill supply area, uh, and this this gap fill is something that could be pretty important where we could see a little bit of a move away. However, we came close to it and didn't get filled, and that means that it is a lot less probable even the second time around. So it's already a confirmation entry 
if you decide to take it. It's a whole round number area of potential resistance as well as a uh, as well as a supply level at a gap fill. So 8,500 is you know you're you're kind of with a double whammy there. So if you want to try to get short um, off of this, the best trade is to wait for the price to come halfway into the level and get short as it comes out of the zone. Or the only other alternative is to see if we get some sort of a basing area here, you can take a short breakdown trade. Um, but that's obviously going to provide a bit more exposure because you're getting in before the trend has changed. But just something to consider and, and a way if you really want to try to trade this to the downside. I think that that's probably a mistake. I think I'd rather just stick with the trend direction. All right, crude oil. So looking at crude, yesterday in crude, we had a 60-minute level, and it was off of this area right here. So leave me a comment down below if you're able to catch that 60-minute short from yesterday. And if you did, you should still be in the trade. Uh, there's no reason to be out of that trade as of yet. And this is, this is how you allow bigger picture runners to happen. Our target uh, was 22, and we did come down in the overnight and hit our target in uh, in in crude now if you missed that you did have another little breakdown opportunity here which we're rallying up for a potential retest um, much like the s p there's no reason to look for a long in crude um, crude is very much on the short side and so i'm going to continue to say that shorts make more sense than longs in this market condition so i'm going to wrap my lines around this area up here give this as a potential reversal on the 15 minute chart so on the 15 minute level remembering that that's got to be in purple um, we've got this as a potential reversal point i think we may reverse off of where we are right now so even if you wanted to try a short coming from here you've got price to to drop now that takes us all the way down to this 2150 area, which let me put that on the uh, four hour chart. When I look at this, I've got a little bit of a wick over wick here on the hourly level. Um, but once again, it's got to be a confirmation entry because our big picture trend is continuing to be down. Gold, yesterday we had a breakout in gold. So hopefully we're able to catch our gold breakout as price rallied up off of our breakout in gold yesterday. We've come back down to this uh, this area here, which was a potential retest if you missed the breakout. Uh, and now we are very close to this area here, but we're basing in front of the level. Now, basing in front of the level, for those of you familiar with the term, is typically referred to as the kiss of death. Um, so I'm going to remove that level because I, I believe that if we're basing in front of the zone, it shows us a fair amount of weakness. And uh, and right now, actually, if you you know if you look at this on the four hour, no question, our trend is continuing to be up. Uh, if I just throw our momentum indicator on here real quick, um, and I throw my my uh, my momentum indicator on here, I don't have too much weakening momentum. So I think that that the better chance is for prices to continue to rally higher. And so you know, might we get a pullback into here? Yes. But I think it's better to not try to trade that pullback and wait for price to come into a quality demand area. I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, there's there's a lot of room from 1760 down to 1745. And I want to try to short that. If you do, I would say look for a breakdown trade. Um, you know, you can have a breakdown trade right below here. If we get a little, you know, maybe even two more candles of sideways price action, you can try a breakdown. But once again, understand that it's counter trend. All right. Bonds and currencies. So we had a lot of breakout trades in our in our currencies yesterday, which are coming back, and our bond trade as well is kind of chopping sideways. So in the in the uh, in the ZN, we've actually rallied up to our 15 minute level that we identified last night, um, and that would be off of this little area right in here, this drop base drop below the pivot high, getting a little bit of a move away. But let's talk about it. One, two, three, four. We're already at our fifth candle and have gone nowhere. So if you took this trade, if you had this preset, I would say take your stop and move it to break even after one more candlestick because it's uh, our six candle rule is telling us that it's not really doing a whole lot up here, and we based a bit before the level. Um, so keep that one in mind. Uh, looking at what we see on the hourly chart, I still don't have a whole lot. We still have a breakout above here if price pops up to this region. Uh, in the Aussie, we had a breakout yesterday in the Aussie as it rallied up 
nicely uh, off of this level. A uh, little bit of sideways price action here and then popped up. We got a nice little run away. If you missed it, we're going to see if you get a, a retest opportunity today off this area right in here as it's coming down into there with a pretty decent little move. Uh, we, now, we came close to this level up above and didn't get in, and it's counter trend, so that has to be confirmation no matter what. Uh, in the euro, we are in between levels of supply and demand, so I think that there's really nothing to, to talk about in the euro. This is our our demand area up, this is our supply area above us, and then we're just kind of chopping in between. And then the Canadian dollar, we had a breakout yesterday, and if you missed the breakout, we're actually coming into our little reversal area right in here. This was off the 15-minute chart, was this uh, this big expanded range candle. A little bit of basing here in front of it makes it a bit weaker, um, actually a lot weaker. And so if you didn't get in, I would wait for, for price to give you a green, maybe a reversal candlestick pattern to enter that trade. Great British pound, Japanese yen. As we take a look at it, um, we see that uh, we had a little bit of a breakout in the overnight. Price gave us a little breakout and rallied up. So if you caught that one for a few points before bed, it was okay. Uh, now it's kind of rolling back over. All of our currencies are rolling back over just a little bit. Uh, and so with all those currencies rolling back over, uh, after yesterday's big move up, we, we may see a bit of a pullback in some of those currencies. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Japanese yen. We had another breakout in it yesterday as well, uh, and hopefully you caught the breakout. If not, here's the retest for the long, and then there's a little wick over wick area up here for a potential short. But once again, we're trading counter trend, so that has to be a confirmation entry. The thing I want you to take out of what we talked about today is that I want to stay with, with the trend direction, and I don't want to trade in a counter trend environment unless... Uh, unless I absolutely have a strong reason to do so. Uh, and staying with the trend has really been what has been most successful for us uh, over the fa past few weeks. And so if you if you want to learn more about that, if you, you know, a lot of people look at this concept of curve over trend, and I disagree. I think the trend is the most important thing we can look at uh, and just stay with that big picture direction. So if you have any questions, as always, please send us an email, support at tradersarmy.com. I will talk to you tomorrow, everybody. Have a great, great day, and I'll see you.